Welcome to the Online Super Coach Podcast. Today, I am truly humbled to have a very inspiring guest with us today. You've heard the phrase, you know, everything in life happens for a reason. Well, that is what our guest today believes. He lost his ability to see at the age of 17 years old. So by um, he is fueled by a strong desire to use his own life's experiences to ignite a sense of hope and optimism into the world. Kevin sets out to inspire others to not give up on life, even when it seems life has given up on them. Um, because of his experiences and unbridled passion to help others make major changes in, in their lives, he is a transformational life and business coach. He is also the host of the Grit and Grace Inspirational Podcast. If you're looking for a podcast to give you a pick-me-up, an inspiration, a little motivation for today, then I strongly, strongly suggest you checking out his podcast. This is Mr. Kevin Lowe. Welcome. Oh, man, I'm, I'm super excited to be here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely. So uh, I uh, we usually start off our podcast with like a phrase of the day, like a, uh, like a motivational, like, you know, something that maybe uh, a quote or uh, a saying, a mantra that you, you know, that, that really inspires you. So if there's something that like that, that you have, um, do you want to share with the audience? Like, you know, that would be. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you kind of mentioned it there um, at the intro and, and that is my strong belief that everything in this life happens for a reason. And I believe a good reason at that even the bad stuff. Right. Now, the bad stuff is what's tricky, though, because the bad stuff, we obviously can't see anything good about it when it happens. Instead, it forces us to travel down the road a ways and be able to finally get to a point where we can look back and understand how it fit into the puzzle of our life. Absolutely. It's and like so a that is that is my my mantra, my reminder when when it's a bad day, when something bad's going on, is to remind myself that there's a greater force at work and that this is all eventually working out for my good. That is absolutely a great way to look at life in general. And um, well, I am just so excited to hear really your story. That's, I don't want to wait anymore for it. <laughs> so if, so uh, we all want to hear exactly firsthand your story. Uh, I can't imagine uh, being a junior or a senior in high school, um, you know, uh, losing your sight. Uh, that is one of the most, uh, you know, memorable times of, you know, everyone's life. So I just wanted to hear, you know, how what, exactly from your perspective, what happened? Yeah, so, so it was back um, 2003. Um, as you said, I was a junior in high school, living kind of my best life. Things had had really just kind of fallen into place, um, had finally found that, like, you know, small group of friends um, who it was kind of the first time in my, my life that I actually enjoyed hanging out with the kids my own age. I, I grew up with, with my sister, um, who's five years older than me. And so I grew up around her and all her friends. And so it made it where the kids my own age, I thought, were totally immature and stupid. And so I never did anything with people outside of school. Instead, I hung out with my sister and her friends. Right. Well, finally, junior year of high school, I finally found that group of friends. And living life, I had a uh, a Ford F-150 4 by 4 It was a 96, um, big mud tires, nice. dual Flowmaster exhaust. It was my <laughs> baby. I had got it when I turned 16 years old. And, um, and so life was going amazing. And um, until it wasn't and it wasn't came with the news that I had a brain tumor. Wow. Now, this came about because I had medical issues. I had migraine headaches every single day. I wasn't growing. I hadn't even gone through puberty. And here I am, 17 years old. And so my, my mom, my grandmother, they knew something was wrong. And so they finally got me to a new doctor and that doctor looked at my chart and said, yeah, something's not right. That led through this kind of fast paced journey that put me in the, the hospital getting an MRI done. 
And the results, the MRI came with the news that I had a craniopharyngioma. Now, this is a non-cancerous tumor, um, but due to its size um, and position in my brain, it had to be removed immediately. Um, the tumor was large. It was They compared it to the size of a plum and was positioned right in the crosshairs of my optic nerve had completely encased my pituitary gland and was pressing against my carotid artery. And so they said without its removal that I would be dead in six months. Oh my God. So um, basically a month after my 17th birthday um, on the morning of October 28th, 2003, I entered surgery to have this tumor removed. Now, I went into the hospital under the care of the leading pediatric neurosurgeon in the country. Um, Luckily was located only an hour away from my home and everything was going to be fine. He assured us these surgeries, he does them all the time. And it was said that I'd be back to school in three to four weeks. There would be really no big problem. It was just a, a minor little bump in the road. Right. And so that's was the mindset going into surgery. Um, Instead, um, as I like to explain it to people, basically my life died on that operating room table and a new life began. Wow. And that began by me waking up from surgery. Now, I don't remember any of the time um, while in the hospital um, after surgery. My memory doesn't come back till quite some time down the down the line but your memory from that time period yeah yeah i have no memory after going into the operating room my memory completely stops um and yeah i remained in the icu for two weeks um and um everything was going wrong all my different endocrine levels were, were going haywire and on top of all of that they discovered that i couldn't see Oh my God. My, my mom, it it happened to be my mom and the uh, neurosurgeon were in the room with me. And I had one of those pull socks, um, little monitors on my toe. And apparently I kept ripping the thing off. (laughs) And so my mom said, the neurosurgeon, he's like, Kevin, he's like, you don't take this off. He's like, do you see the light? And there was a little red light apparently on the pull socks. He's like, do you see this light? And my mom said that I, I said, no, I don't see anything. And it was at that moment that he looked at my mom. My mom looked at him. He walked over and he flipped on the light switch. And he's like, Kevin, do you see this light? And I said, no, no, it's just black. It's just black. And it was at that moment that they discovered that I was left completely blind. So literally, no, I have no light perception whatsoever. So no shapes or shadows Um, was left completely blind, was left um, also with uh, I lost my sense of smell, um, had short term memory loss for a solid six months that then kind of even extended out longer than that, Um, had all kind of new medical issues related to the tumor killing off my pituitary gland, which control controls all of your body's hormones. And so that is something that I still deal with today, 19 years later, is I have a host of medications that I take trying to replace what the body is supposed to do naturally, which is a pretty poor alternative. And, um, but, but yeah, so that is how it all came about. Um, And like I said, I mean, it was October 28, 2003 was the day when the world quit spinning for me and my entire family. Wow, that is unbelievable story. I mean, I just can't imagine the whiplash of all of a sudden, like everything changes and and even how it affects your life, um, your education. I'm curious, like how, you know, you continue the school socially you know, just your your personal life in general, like uh, a- after that, I mean, did you go back to, I mean, were you able, how would you go back to high school or? Uh, yeah, schooling? of course. So I never went back to school the rest of my junior year. Um, instead, I 
was set up with what they called hospital homebound, something we'd never heard of before until yeah. then. And so I, my mom would drop me off at my grandparents' house each morning. She would then go on to work and I would stay with my Nana and I would have, I had three different teachers who came to the house. I had one teacher who taught me my school subjects, another teacher who taught me how to read Braille, how to start using a computer with talking software. And then I had a third teacher who started teaching me mobility skills, how to get around using a cane um, and all of that. And so I, through it all, um, I was able to catch up with my schoolwork that junior year to the fact that I was able to make it back to school for the start of my senior year. And I ultimately would walk across the stage and graduate with my class class of 2005. Oh my God. Um, that was something that when I look back on it now, I realize how absolutely crazy it was that that even happened because yeah. I was a kid who I hated school. Like I always said, I would rather be sick with the flu every year. I would pray that I would get the flu just so I could stay home from school for a week or two. Yeah. And yet here I am, this kid Junior year of high school, I had all the big standardized tests out of the way. I was sitting pretty. And here I was, I had this traumatic thing happen. And I've wondered, like, why didn't I just take the get out of free, you know, school free card? Like, I didn't have big, you know, career aspirations or big college dreams. So I could have very easily just kind of skipped the whole thing. Yeah. Um, but instead, but instead, my family said from the time I came out of surgery, even when I was still healing, my whole thing was that I wanted to still be able to graduate with my class. Right. And secretly, my my family, they didn't think that would happen because of how bad I was besides being blind, but just physically with all the things happening. And yet I did it. And I walked across that stage, um, got my diploma. And looking back on it now, I can realize what a pivotal moment that was where my, my faith is a big part of my journey. And so I believe at that moment, God let me understand that even in this new life that's so difficult, that I would still be able to do great things. I and... Think and I believe that was kind of a catalyst for moving forward. That is unbelievable. That is just even the amount of work you had in that year, year and a half, um, just to, yeah. I mean, you're basically going three educations. You got to learn how to move around. You got to <laughs> whole new exactly. language, basically. Exactly. As well as junior and senior years worth of work, which isn't easy to be in with. So exactly, um, exactly. That is unbelievable. So then <laughs> after after that, what were you, I mean, I know you said you you just mentioned you didn't have uh, many, uh, you know, big work aspirations or anything, but where yeah. did you go from there? Like, what did you want to do? Um, so I dabbled in, in college. I went to the community college here, um, to the really good college, and I went there. And, you know, as I said, I wasn't a big fan of school to begin with. Yeah. even though school was a total breeze for me. And so now I'm in college. I'm in college classes. I have aides that they're assigning me who are absolutely ridiculous. They either don't show up or they do show up and they're worthless. And it just got to be so frustrating. I mean, I would have days when my, my Nana would drop me off at college and my aide wouldn't show up. So Nana would sit in algebra class with me taking notes. And I'm telling, and, and poor Nana, she's trying to, you know, write down algebraic equations, <laughs> and, yeah. which she knows nothing about. And, and so it was a total headache. I eventually decided that, you know what? College just isn't quite my game. And so I, I quit that whole thing. And to be honest, for, for a long time, many years afterwards, it was still just kind of surviving, kind of going through the motions. Um, deep down inside of me, um, I think I was buying time until I could see again. Yeah. Because I knew everything's fixable. 
There's stuff going on in China for research. There's stuff going on in, in all these different countries with stem cells. I'm going to be able to see again. So why, you know, I, I don't really have to dive into this new world. I just have to get by until I can see. Yeah, yeah. And that kind of mindset, I think, kind of stuck with me for a long time, a lot longer than the quote unquote experts would, would tell my parents that it should be because, of course, the the experts at the different blind centers would would tell my, you know, my mom and stuff how, you know, you know, Kevin really needs, you know, he needs to just accept this and move on. And and which I think is probably the most horrific thing you could ever say to somebody, um, because I believe we're all on our own kind of timetable of life, especially when it comes to getting past something traumatic. And um, and it would take me on my own time until finally one day I had read a book. And at the end of the book, the very end of the book, and, and this was an audio book. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the book, the uh, one of the, the people in the book, he was standing in this river and he was he was kind of talking to the river. And he said, listen, you know, I'll be back someday. But for right now, I have more life to live. And when I listened to that and I rewinded the the audio book and I listened to it again and I thought, wow, you know what, God, I'm not giving up that you'll let me see again someday, but I understand it might not be till I'm in heaven. So for right now, though, I got more life to live. And it was at that moment when I think it kind of changed for me. And I kind of embraced this new life as much as I could and started truly moving forward. Um, and, and that came with me in 2013. I started my own home-based travel agency. Wow. Yeah, and that was super cool. I did this whole whole program through one of my, my local like uh, Division of Blind Services um, they did a job readiness program, which was a total joke. I called it blind daycare, <laughs> and, um, but it led to me getting to do some internships at local businesses. And so I did an internship at a local uh, AM radio station, right. and then I did one at a travel agency. Mm-hmm. And um, lo and behold, those would both end, um, didn't, still didn't have a job out of either one. And so I ended up creating my own business and opened my own home-based travel agency in 2013. Oh my God. That is, there's so much to unpack there. First of all, <laughs> that is a great quote too. We could use that in the beginning, you know, like not to give up, but I have more life to, to live. Uh, to live. Yes. I, I think I paraphrase it. That, that is, that is really, especially how it uh, impacted your life. I mean, that is a phenomenal, phenomenal quote that, yeah. I got to put on my board. I'll give you two today. <laughs> but I, all of the <laughs> on the board. So that's really, really amazing. And then how uh, that journey, you know, of the internship, you know, that led you to even just having the, you know, cojones to open up your own travel agency, your own business, which is, which is amazing. So um, tell me about that. Tell me about your travel agency. Yeah. So, so this came about, you know, like I said, I did the internship at both places. Both of them at the end of the day weren't in a position to, to take on anybody. Um, and so, you know, here I was, I was kind of back square one. I'm like, well, what do I do? And so I loved working on radio. That was a blast. I enjoyed it more than anything else. But, you know, I'm like, okay, that didn't go anywhere. So now I'm trying to look at getting hired on at a travel agency and everybody wants you to have two years experience. And I'm like, well, how do I get experience if no one will hire me? Right. And so that's when then it was my sister who found out through some research about this idea of becoming a home-based travel agency. And so, yeah, so in literally January of 2013, I opened the doors to Better Days Travel. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, and so I literally, I operated Better Days Travel from 2013 all the way to 2020. And, um, some years were better than others. Um, and, but it was something I could do. I literally, here I am, can work out of my home office and I can design trips for people online, online with, 
with different suppliers or I'm on the phone creating itineraries. I mean, I did, I did honeymoons. I did big, huge group trips and, and all of this stuff. And it was incredible. And I loved it. And then 2020 came around and it was going to be my best year ever. Um, I had some massive trips planned on the books, including a huge group cruise for me and my family and friends to celebrate um, my 17th anniversary of when I had become blind. Um, I was calling it, which I just thought was super cool that it was 2020 and which was kind of like a number, you know, anonymous with, with, with vision 2020. And yet that it was happening on my 17th anniversary, which meant that I had been blind for as long as I had been able to see. Right. And so I put together this whole cruise, all this stuff. Well, of course the pandemic hit March of 2020 and within seven days, my entire travel agency took a, you know, a deep dive into the shallow end of the swimming pool. And, and so kind of, you know, like everybody kind of shell shocked and in what in the world do we do now? (laughs) And, um, and that's what would end up leading me on the path that I am on today with a podcast and coaching. Well, yeah. So how did that, where that transition come? Now I know obviously we have the coaching and podcast. So how did you get into the uh, podcast from that, from the, um, so, so, so essentially you just loved your experience with the radio, I'm assuming. And then you, you wanted to uh, like put, throw your hat in the ring with the podcasting, I, I guess. Yeah, you know, I hadn't even, I really hadn't thought about the radio. What my intention was is it was when we were all stuck in quarantine during that time. And here I am, the travel agency has kind of all but disappeared. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to use this time to start a YouTube channel. Cause I had been thinking about doing a YouTube channel for a while. So I ordered all this, this YouTube equipment, you know, got the tripod, got the, the camera. And then all of a sudden it hits me and I'm like, what are you doing, Kev? You can't do this by yourself. You're going to have to rely on somebody to be there with you to film you and yeah. edit the film. And I'm like, oh Lord, what, what have I done? Yeah. And it was at that time that my sister was like, well, why don't you do a podcast? And I'm like, well, what is a podcast? <laughs> and, and she tells me, I'm like, well, that sounds like a lame alternative to a YouTube channel. <laughs> and, and, um, and so I end up, though, diving into podcasting and I am start listening to podcasts. And now I'm starting to listen to podcasts about how to start a podcast. Yeah. And, and I quickly realize, Kevin, you just found your jam. This is the world of audio, man. This is this yeah. was made for you. And um, and so I launched the uh the podcast in May of 2020. Um, with the intention though, I hadn't given up on the travel yet. And so my thought process was focus on telling travel-related stories. So I started interviewing different reps with different suppliers, plus started doing some solo episodes talking about what it's like to travel when you can't see and all of that. And it quick, it quickly just kind of took off And this evolution began really going out of 2020 into 2021. And at that point, I'm starting to have people reach out to me about vacations and I find myself making up excuses why I can't work with them. And it was because I found a new direction. Right. And this new direction was podcasting. And, and like I said, it just quickly evolved. It grew up. It was, it was, it started out as called the lowdown on life and travel. Um, Then it became the lowdown with Kevin Lowe and then has, you know, become what it is today, which is grit, grace, and inspiration. Gotcha. Gotcha. So what did you do with the travel? Do you still have that? Are you, uh, did you get, uh, Nope. I, I let that puppy sail out to sea. Yep. So I was able to, I was able to, to sell off the website that I had for it. I sold it to another travel agent and um, said uh, sayonara because at the end of the day, as much as I enjoyed doing that, I kind of knew deep down that it wasn't really what I was meant to be doing. Right. You know, and, and so but I didn't know what else to do. And so I kept just doing it until 
something else came along. And when I got started on this journey of podcasting, which then the the podcast with the in-depth interviews I was having, and at the end of every interview, I kept having the guests tell me, they're like, you ask me questions that no one else has ever asked me on an interview. Or they, they would say, they're like, you see parts of my story that no one else sees. And that kind of led me down this, this natural evolution of getting into coaching, right. of working with people. And, and so I've come to understand that if it seems easy, like you're floating down the, with, the, with the current, that means you're headed in the right direction. That means you have if, you know, but but if, if you're having to paddle a little too hard because you're going upstream, it probably means that you're going the wrong direction. Absolutely. You know, and this, that's that is like so. And that's so interesting, too, because, well, first of all, I want to commend you that you were able to sell the website off because so many people I talk to, like they, they, they're running a business or some kind of operation and they just they just let it go. Instead of like, you know, trying to sell it for something and get some value yes. for what they had. So I commend you for that. And if anyone's listening, you know, you know, you build it up and sell it. That way you could move on to the next thing. That's the whole point of being an entrepreneur. You know, exactly. like, oh, that's, that's really great that you were able to do that. And then also it was such a great uh, experience for you because you just you'd be able to pick up just general business experience and that yes. you could apply to what you're doing now. It's especially dealing with people and in the coaching business, you're dealing with people. So it's yep. <laughs> all of that is, is such a great stepping stone also. So I really, that I think that's great that, that transition with all of that. And then the last thing that you said um, reminds me of, I don't know if I have it here. There's a, there's a book called uh, strength finder and it just talks about, you know, identifying what your strengths are and uh, hopefully finding a profession or something you could do that, you know, that, that really is congruent with those strengths. Yep. And that way you could really a likely make, make, make good money for your service. Cause you're, cause you're in the right spot, but also be, you're really, you know, providing great service to the world. And, and you're really, you know, because you're doing what you're really kind of meant to do. Yes. So, <clears throat> what you said and how, like, you just found this so much easier. And this is just like, you just swimming downstream and you just, you found your niche, you found your, your stride. To me, that's the same thing is that you really found uh, where your strength is. And that's why it's, it's so explosive. That's why it's working so well. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So I, I just, again, I just think that is just absolutely uh, incredible. Tell me about the name grit, grace, and inspiration, like, especially grit and grace. It's like, it's, when you think of it, it's like two op almost op opposing things. Yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. The, the name, the name really, when, when I was trying to come up with a new name for the podcast, because the lowdown with Kevin Lowe, the lowdown is kind of a play off of my last name. And although I loved it and people who heard it, they loved it. I realized that it didn't really speak to what the podcast was to represent, you know? And so when I started to come up with this whole rebrand process, I, you know, I really struggled with, with trying to identify what is a short name I can use that sums up everything that I'm about, that this podcast is about, that my guests are about. And that's when I came up with, you know, see the, see the name, you know, the, the term grit and grace, you see that a lot. Yeah. And I was like, I love that. Cause you got the grit, you got to dig deep. You got to do the hard work, Yeah. you know, and then you have the grace aspect, but I knew that there was something more. And that's when I was like, all of a sudden one morning, my grit, grace, and inspiration. Yeah. And literally it just sums up what it's all about. It's about being an inspiration to others, using the grit that you've used, the fight, the, the, you know, digging deep, the going through the hard stuff in life, you know, not just for your benefit, but to inspire others. Right. You know, and and so so yeah, that's that's kind of the whole whole kind of story it. behind the name. I yeah. absolutely love it. I really, really love it. So I'm sure you get this question all the time, <laughs> but <laughs> I can't think of too many people who I who is more apt to answer this question than anybody else. So what advice can you give to our listeners for overcoming adversity? 
I think the biggest thing, first and foremost, is to give yourself grace, to let yourself understand that it's okay to be sad. It's okay that you're going through hard times right now. And the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, as I kind of said earlier, you know, we're all on our own path in life and you're on your own journey. And so if you're going through some hard times, let yourself realize it, understand it. I'll put it in air quotes, appreciate it. And once you can do that, give yourself that grace, then start finding the grit to dig deep, to get yourself out of that hole and to be able to finally experience what's on the other side of that trauma that you're going through. And the biggest thing is to understand that even the big stuff that happens in life, when we look at life as a whole, it's all really just a bump in the road. And if you can realize and look at it from the big picture, that soon enough, you're going to be past that speed bump and back cruising down the road of life. That's exactly right. It's just sometimes it's when you're on that bump, it's hard to think of the speed bump. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, I mean, sometimes, sometimes it feels like somebody just flopped a boulder in in, in the in the middle of the interstate. But you know, <laughs> exactly, exactly. But you know, it's like what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. You know, so exactly. It really, really, just continues to make you a lot more durable, and it makes you a better you know person all around by being able to endure all those. All yeah, those, all those little. It, it is. I mean, it's, it's kind of what you kind of like. It goes back to what I used to always tell my my little stepbrother when we, when we were little is I was tell him when he'd always fall and get hurt and stuff. I tell him I'm like, Oh, don't worry about it. It builds character. Well, yeah. you know, I, I did that as a way of like, you know, shut up and keep, keep moving forward. It, it's fine. You'll give you a story to tell at school, but you know, in the big picture, right. it really is. I mean, and, and it kind of goes back to the you know thing I said at the beginning of everything's happening for a reason and a good reason at that. And We don't understand how the challenges of today are going to impact successes of tomorrow. But the fact of the matter is, is that they all fit in this puzzle of our lives somehow. And, um, you know, we just have to remember and keep in our mind that there's a there's a bigger, you know, picture at work here. And um, we just can't let ourselves kind of get lost in the weeds or or hung up on that obstacle too long uh, before we just keep moving forward. Well, well, following up on kind of the same theme, you, I was looking at your website and you mentioned that um, you said something very profound that like, you know, uh, becoming blind, I, I'm paraphrasing obviously, but has, has been um, maybe the best thing that's ever happened to you. So if you could expand on that. <laughs> yeah. And I think, I think the biggest thing with that is, it's allowed me to grow into the person that I am. Right. You know, I, I have to, I have to wonder sometimes, would I still appreciate the little things like I do today if this never happened to me? Right. Would I still be sure that every time I go to hang up the phone when talking to a fa- family member or a friend, would I still say I love you? Because right. I realize that nothing is guaranteed, not even tomorrow. Right. And, and I feel like going blind, it did. It helped to build me into the man that I am today, who I have to believe is somebody who understands the importance of life, of love, of relationships more than I think I ever could have if this right. hadn't happened. That's it. That's that's really, really powerful stuff. And it really, you know, it, it puts things in perspective as far as just appreciating the, not the the little things, but I would say the important things in life as well. Yes. So that's, that's really, really, um, really great. Um, so I, I was also curious that um, a lot of, uh, you've heard, I've heard, or I'm sure people have heard that when you lose one of your senses, it almost like increases or heightens your um your sense, all of the other senses. So um, I was just, I was just curious if that's true. If you are now, you know, if, you, if you're hearing and 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 everything else, it's, it's just a heightened sense now because of the loss of your vision. 
Yeah. Yeah. So, so definitely hearing, you know, is, is a big deal, especially since I lost my sense of smell also. Um, and so I, so I, I, yeah, so I, yeah, yeah, so I might have stopped two senses right off the bat. And, um, yeah, no, and, and, you know, and I think we, we think that like, oh my goodness, Kevin's hearing is so amazing. Well, it's really just the fact that Kevin only has his hearing to pay attention to. Right. (laughs) But, but I tell you though, something that really amazing happened back in 2017 is that I found out about the ability for anyone can do it, but it's definitely easier for somebody who's blind because we, we don't have the eyesight is that to retrain the brain to see through sound. And so literally I went out to California. Like sonar kind of like. Uh, yeah. Echolocation. Echolocation. Yep. Wow. And so literally I went out to California and trained one-on-one with a guy Literally no facility. I would literally just go to his house each morning and we'd work at his house. We'd work around the neighborhood. We'd work back at the Airbnb apartment and literally retrained the visual cortex of my brain to see through sound. And so I do that with a making a little sharp clicking noise with my tongue against the roof of my mouth. That little click that it makes my brain has learned to interpret the echo emitted off of the objects around me to form a visual image. Oh my God. And so it's absolutely out of this world. It has changed my life trifold. So at that point I had been blind for, for 14 years. And on the third day of training, um, we were, working in the uh, Airbnb apartment we had rented. I was there with my mom and sister. My mom and sister are out enjoying Los Angeles, doing tourist stuff. And me and my trainer, Brian, were were in the apartment and we were working on identifying corners of the room. And at this point, the past two days were brutal. I'm trying to make this clicking noise that I can't make. I'm trying to see something that I can't see. And it was very frustrating. Well, here it is, third day of training. I'm in this apartment. And all of a sudden, it was like somebody turned on the light switch. All of a sudden, I could make this clicking noise. And I could see the walls of the apartment. That's insane. That's unbelievable. And so literally, literally, I... I would would kept doing this exercise. And I'd get a little bit farther away from the wall. A little bit farther away. Until all of a sudden, it all came into focus. And so the wall was like, we use the term like fuzzy geometry. So the wall was like this this shade of gray, fuzzy gray. But I could walk up to the wall, never touch it, walk alongside the wall. And then all of a sudden, there was a deep, dark opening. And that was the opening to the kitchen. And I could see it all. That's crazy. That's and so, incredible. so literally that has changed my entire life because now my world is no longer just black. No longer can I only see what I can touch. Now, literally I can preview my environment. You walk into, you know, a bathroom when you're at a restaurant before I'm just, you know, using my cane to, to hit around the walls. Well, now I'm still using my cane, but with a couple of clicks, I can tell, okay, there's a wall there. Oh, I got a sharp ping off of the faucet. There's the faucet over there. And it's absolutely amazing. I mean, I always use the, uh, the representation because I think it's so cool is, is outside literally in a parking lot. I can see the shape of a car right there in front of me. It's, it's amazing. That is, that is absolutely, I've never heard of that before. Echo location. That's like, that's like having a superpower. That's like, <laughs> that's like a daredevil. Exactly. And then like, you know, visually kind of. See exactly. Exactly. You're really like a superhero. <laughs> yeah. Funny. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, it literally is, has been the most life-changing thing ever. And, 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 you know, when, when that happened that day in California, I remember laying in bed that night and I remember praying and I remember saying to God, you always do work in mysterious ways. Today, you let me see again. 
just in a whole new way. Right, right, right. You know, and um, yeah, it's it's been it's been literally, you know, you know, eye opening <laughs> for lack of a better term of 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 this and and um, yeah, it's so talking about the senses, I. I lost two and then gained. Uh, well, now you got to find the older location it, guy. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Smell back. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's unbelievable. I cannot believe that's a real thing. Like that. That's <laughs> that's really really incredible. That's really incredible. Um, I wonder if how many people even know about that. You know, I mean, not. I, I can tell you, not enough. Yeah. I went. I went 14 years, never hearing about it, and a big part of the problem. Is like I should that, be right after learning Braille, you should, or before. Exactly. You, you, you know what it is? And, I, and I'll tell you, it's the strangest thing because before I went out there and trained with this guy, me and my mom were at lunch one day and we ran into a bunch of the teachers from the blind center. Right. Um, some of them who I had worked with others. And I was telling them so excited about me going to do this training. Well, my mom told me afterwards that they all looked at us with like this bewildered look like oh my gosh he's getting scammed yeah and it's like it's like you're almost dealing with the establishment of the blind right. and, and and they view this echolocation as like alternative medicine like you're coming in to to steal away the white canes and i'm like no right. no 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 i still use a cane it's just another tool in my right. toolbox Absolutely. to help make this life a little bit easier that's so crazy. yeah so it's it's really just it's not like that your senses have been uh increased it's like not naturally it's just you've just obviously <laughs> hyper focus more on your hearing and exactly train you and actually do a special ops training for your hearing <laughs> to really exactly. uh improve it so that's really really yeah absolutely unbelievable i mean I, I hate to make the segment away from that because it's so interesting to me but yeah I wanna, no i want to yeah. plug in and hear about your coaching business um of so course. tell me about, we didn't get to that yet. Uh, you've got your podcast, travel agency, and you just like this re renaissance man. And now you have <laughs> this coaching business. So tell me about that. Yeah. So, so like I said earlier, the, the coaching came off of the podcast. And, and once I started having these conversations with people and, and really started, you know, understanding people and having people mention to me about coaching, at which point I had never even really heard about the the realm of coaching. I think I only heard of life coaching in terms of comedians making fun of them, you know? And, um, and so I get into this realm of coaching and I'm like, Oh wow, this is really amazing. And so that's when I dove in real deep into the, the world of coaching and yeah. And so now today literally working, you know, I call it, you know, as a, you know, transformational life and business coach. And that is kind of where I get to use, kind of my own life's experience of uh, experiencing what I did, going through the loss and the recovery and forming a business. And then especially now really being able to pull on my past challenges to create this, this job and this life that, you know, is fulfilling. And so now that's who I primarily work with are, are people who, have undergone something in their life, a traumatic past, something that now kind of has their eyes opened to new opportunities that makes them realize they want something more out of their life. No but they're not <laughs> not sure what it is, you know? And um and and so now, you know, I can kind of do my thing from from drawing on my experience, drawing on on my, you know, ability to dive in deep with somebody to undercover the underlying issues in their life and, you know, and, and help them out. And um, it's, as I say, the, the podcast is there to inspire the coaching is there, you know, to transform. So how do you, how do you, um, what are you doing to attract new clients to your uh, coaching business? Like where do you get most of your uh, new clients from like what source? Yeah, primarily right now it's coming through the podcast. That's annoying. so yeah, so so either through my own podcast or guessing on other shows. Um, is yeah, that is literally my one big avenue. I I'm kind of uh I go through series sequences in life where I can 
think I love social media and then other times I hate social media. At the current moment, I hate social media because I feel like it's a time suck that I just, I don't know. And so I've just instead, I dive deep into the realm of podcasting. And, and that is where, you know, through, through the podcast, you know, getting people into my, into my world, into my realm, whether through, you know, getting them on my, you know, email lists or, or I've started something new on the podcast where I'm doing kind of these life roadmap sessions, offering my listeners the opportunity to kind of get off of the sideline and into the game and, you know, and us just work together completely free to map out like their roadmap, you know, for life. And, um, and so that is, that is my, my main focus right now. And and it's how I've been getting coaching clients. So I was just curious, you, I mean, this is now slightly off topic, but like does Facebook and Instagram and the others have, um, you know, any modifications or any uh, other additional services for people who are, let's say visually impaired, because it's still, I have trouble navigating it myself. <laughs> I can see it, you know, so it's yeah. like changing it. It's, it's not really it, changing where everything is and everything, you know? Yeah, no, it's honestly, it, it's pretty easy thanks to technology. So I have, so I use an Apple iPhone, just like everybody, and built into the settings of every person's iPhone, iPad, is an accessibility feature called voiceover. And literally you turn that on and it now makes the phone in every app on the phone completely accessible to the blind. Wow. And so literally yeah. I can be I can be on Facebook and be swiping like everyone else in the phone as I swipe it's reading the post to me, you right. know? Um and then if you're on Instagram, um if people use like alt text when they do images, um where you can add a description to your pictures, that's then picked up by the screen reader. So it actually can describe wow. what the photo is, you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, you know, I, I enjoy social media for the part of being social. I don't enjoy social media for the part of trying to promote a business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <You're not. laughs> yeah. Well, um, this has been really inspiring and a great way to start the day, uh, you know, for, you know, to listening to this, you know, to be having engaging with you in this conversation. Um, before we go, where can our listeners find your podcast? Yeah, absolutely. Well, first and foremost, and thank you for having me today. Oh, thank um, you so much for being on. This has been, yeah. Well, well, thank you. Um, best place to go wherever you listen to podcasts, where it's Apple podcasts, Spotify, Wherever it is, literally, right, if you just do a search for grit, grace, and inspiration, um, and it will pull it up. Another place, easy access to kind of connect with me on all the places is my website. And that's okay. just gritgraceinspiration.com. So I just left out the and symbol. So it's literally just gotcha. gritgraceinspiration.com. Gritgraceinspiration.com. And the podcast is Grit, Grace, and Inspiration. So you can Google it or just look at any of those. Apple, Spotify, any 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 podcast service, and they have that. So that's absolutely terrific. Well, Kevin, this has been a real pleasure having you here today. Um, let's definitely keep in touch. And the next venture, next business you take on and do, I'd love to have you back on and talk to you about how that's evolving. It seems well, like you're, you're just like this Renaissance man constantly reinventing yourself. So that's really amazing. Oh, man. Well, well, I thank you so much, dude. This has been a blast today, and I appreciate you having me on. Okay, great. Thank you very much.